Hi, Babache. Today is April Fool's Day. It is Wednesday, April 1st, and it is a, uh, it's a Wednesday. But I'd like to do something different for this video. I'd like to teach you about two different things that I don't think any of us have really learned about. Uh, there's a certain way to play chords on all of our instruments that I'd like to show you, and besides that, I'd like to show you a difficult shifting exercise. A, a, a shifting exercise that'll get you shifting all around your instruments. Uh, so let's start off with the chords. So it's a shape that I'm sure many of you have seen in your music before, but it's a pattern that I hope you'll start to recognize and that you can use as well. So let, let me start off by just playing the first chord for you. It'll be a G major chord. We all have these three strings, at least G, D, and A. And if you put your first finger down on the A string for the B note, you have these three notes, G, D, and B. And if you pretended that we had to make all of these notes, we could play it like this if, if we actually had to push down for open strings. Or we also have the G minor chord that will sound sad. We just take that B up on top and we turn it into a B flat. When I strum through it, my thumb starts right here and it quickly rakes through just like that and if we pretended that we didn't have this nut right here we'd have to play it like this with one one two but the, the nut is there so we don't need it but if we take this fingering and move it up anywhere, anywhere on our instrument, we're going to get that chord. So this was the major chord. This is also a major chord. We can move it up to here. We can move it up to here. Move it up to here. We can even move it up a string or down a string for the violas and cellos. So, let's talk about this again. This, here's our G major chord. Still the G major chord, but using our third finger there. If we take all of this and move it up to our regular first position, our notes are A, we can call this the root. We have an, an E, we can call this the fifth because it's five notes higher than A. A, E, and then we have the C sharp right there. And whatever note we play at the bottom of this shape, or even if we move it, now it's that note, the E for violin play. And this works on all of our instruments except for basses. Basses are tuned differently. They have the opposite strings of a violin, actually. So we have a G chord that we know so far. G major. And we know how to make it into a minor chord. And we also have A major right here. That's an A major chord. So if we take that G minor chord, to our first fret, then we get our A minor chord. So it's the minor shape, and we can put it anywhere we want. That is our root, and then we just make the minor shape one, one, two. For cello players, I recommend you use this fingering where you have one, two, three, Sorry, one, one, and then three for the major chord. And then one, one, two for the minor chord. 
violin players, I find it easier to do, and viola players, I find it easier to do this. And then, so, so far we know G major, G minor, and we know A major, and A minor. How about I quiz you? Could you make a B minor chord happen on your instrument? A B minor chord. So you find the B on one of your lowest two strings, and then you flatten your finger. This is usually a bad technique, but it's good technique for chords. And then you make the minor shape. So here's on my violin, it's right here. That's the B note, and then I flatten it. So I have the root and the fifth. One, five, one. And then I make the minor chord happen with the second finger and not the high two. Or for cello, the second finger and not third finger. If this is more comfortable for you, or if you have smaller hands, violins and violas, you're welcome to use the same finger as the cellos do right there. So we have the B, F sharp, and then we have the D. And then we can even make a cool song just using three of the chords I've taught you so far. Let's go from a B minor chord to an A major chord to a G major chord to an A major. Just kind of walking up and down. song with just those three chords. And then all of these chords that I've showed for the violin players have started on the G, but you can also move any of them over to start on your D string because you still have a, th a set of three strings and you can go like that to create a D major chord. Or for my cellos and violas, you can go down to your C string and then make this shape. to do it as you go up higher instead of one one two all the way up there you can just use three three four and all of this just uses the exact same shape of taking one finger putting it somewhere on your lower two strings either the C or the G for cello viola or the G or the D for violin and then either making a minor shape or a major shape. All right, let's do one more chord progression. Uh, if you have a pencil, I highly suggest you write this down so you don't have to memorize it. Let's do a chord progression of C major. And then let's go to a, um, an A minor. excuse me, to a D minor, to a G major. So again, that was C, and then A, C, and then A, and then D, and then G. It's actually the open string for the cello. C major, to an A minor, to a D minor, to a G major. 
Uh, cellos can actually play that on first position. Here's your C major. Here's your A minor. Here's your D minor, just bringing it, up, bringing it over. And then the G major. So let's try it together. Let's do four strums on each chord. Here's the C, ready, go. you can use the exact same fingering that the cellos used right there. But C, A, D, G, C, A, D, G, A minor and D minor in there. So for a violin player, it's just a little bit harder because you have to shift into third position right here to create the C major chord because our first finger goes on the C note because we only use the bottom two strings to start the chord. And there's our C and we make it a major chord or a major chord with our third finger. Not minor. Notice how it's just a whole step above a through on that string. So we have C major, and then we go to an A minor chord. So we find the A on our G string and then make a minor shape. And then we have a D minor chord, which we have, we have two options. Uh, let's just use this one, sorry. Let's use open D, open A, and low one on the E string. If you want to play it another way, you could do, you could shift up the G string and do it right there. So go to G, A, E, C, D, D, and then just make the minor shape. In our uh, G major chord, we should just use open G right there. Another option is this G right there. If you want it to sound higher, that's another possibility. And then that all returns back to our C major chord right there. So again, let's have everybody try to do this with me. Four chords. I, I hope you've written them down. It's C, A, D, G. C major, A minor, D minor, G major. This is a very common chord progression that are used, that is used in lots of lots of pop songs, but also lots of orchestra songs too. Okay, let's give each chord four strums. Ready and C major go. One, two, three, and then A minor, and then D minor. just do the, um, the shifted up version of the D chord. That way everything stays on the G, the G string and you don't have to go over to the E string at all. So using these chords, it can turn your violin into a guitar or a ukulele kind of a uh, feeling. I hope that made sense. If you'd like more info on that, or if you'd like help figuring out how to play a B-flat minor chord or an E-flat major chord, send me a message on Remind, and, uh, and I can help you out with that. There is a website, there are websites where you can look up the chords to songs that you know that are guitar chords. Uh, one of them is called ultimateguitartabs.com. And you can search the chords to whatever song you want to learn. And it includes the words with the chords above it. And you can figure out how to play the chords to lots of your favorite songs. And then maybe sing over it too. Or maybe you play the chords and then you have a friend 
sing or have somebody else play the melody on their instrument. Okay, let's move on. Next, I'd like to talk about some shifting exercises. We're going to be shifting rather far this time. So when you play your middle harmonic right here, that's out on our A string. When you play that middle harmonic right there, which is the exact midpoint between the bridge and the nut, the string actually restarts because the notes on all of our A strings are just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller as we go higher and higher and higher. So the exercise is that we can play one note on the first part of the string and then play it again the next time it appears on our A string. So with open A it's pretty easy because it's just our harmonic. But then let's try using a siren and using just our first finger and we're going to go from the note B flat which is low one and we're going to find the next B flat on our A string. And at first it's okay to be extra slimy as we go up, but eventually we'll be able to go like that and actually find the note on our first try, unlike what I just did. So now try that with me. Here's the B flat. Now slide up to the next B-flat. For all of our instruments, our thumb must move. I can't show you. For all of our instruments, our thumb needs to move like this. For violins and violas, it goes up to right here. For cello players, it actually just goes this way, da -yum. or it can even go past that so that our thumb comes around like that, and then we have this sitting on top of our instrument like that, our old spider. Now let's use a different note. How about the note uh, C? C, not C sharp, but C. And let's use our second finger, and let's also use our second finger to find it up here making sure that our hand still stays straight like this. Nothing stressing out. Here we go. Then glide up. Now let's try it with a D note. So violin third finger and cello. Violin viola third finger, cello fourth finger. Here's the D on our A string, and we're going to go all the way up to find the next D on our A string. And now we'll switch over to cello. Here's that same D note that we were just doing. Um, I'm going to sh go from my fourth finger to my third finger because for cellos, once we get above uh, like fifth position, we don't really ever use the pinky. It it's very, very, very rare that we use the pinky above fifth position on the cello. But here, here it is again, the D note on the A string. careful that you don't tense up your shoulders. Uh, when I was in high school, actually, every time that I shifted to the high notes that I was scared of, of playing, I would, always go, I would always go like that and I'd freak out. So I had to work in college. Once my professor pointed it out to me that my shoulders would always go like that when I played high notes, I had to work on really lowering my shoulders, even when I'm playing. <laughs> 
playing the high note that I was afraid of. Still had to be had to be relaxed and keep my shoulders down. Uh, new note. Let's just try with a B natural from first finger to first finger. <laughs> level of this is to just go from uh, different notes down here to up there like this. Here's D's and B's. second finger C and at first it'll be kind of funky and you have to do lots of fishing but eventually you'll get a feel for how far an octave eight notes from one note to the same note is, and you'll just be able to go up and down. This is a phenomenal exercise for getting rid of your fears of those high notes. And it's okay to sound sound ugly for a little while. You can also do this on uh, different strings as well, even on the C string. but it's also extremely extremely beneficial so i hope you have fun with the guitar chords that we learned go learn some of your favorite songs uh, you can either look it up or listen and hear that oh that sounds like a chord built off of this note is it a major chord no it's supposed to sound minor right there right oh that's right and then what chord after that yeah you can think of the b flat i It'll be hard at first, but the more you do anything, the better you get at it. Uh, thanks. I hope you enjoyed this different kind of video. I'd, I'd love some feedback, and I'd love to hear you guys say hi. So send me a message on Remind or Google Classroom or anything. Bye. Uh, go outside. It's super, super nice today. Bye-bye.